Hey, welcome fellow educators. As I kind of walk you guys through um, what I've been doing with Nearpod and Amplify Science. Um, basically with the curriculum that I'm offering right now in fourth grade, we have Amplify Science. Our district has adopted this program. This is our second year of using it. And I'm just continuing to learn and try to grow and implement this as best I can with my students. And some new fun things that I've been able to add uh, is a program like Nearpod. Um, so program like Nearpod is really good because it's made my Google Slides that are offered through Amplify um, really fun and engaging. And so I'm just going to walk you through how I've been connecting um, those two things because they work pretty seamlessly for me um, on most days. And so, yeah, so I'm just going to show you that and take you through that. Um, I dress up each day for my kids. And so right now um, I'm in like half costume, I wear the full costume later on. But um, yeah, this is like half costume for you guys. So, hey, super tips, right? Um, as we're trying to keep kids engaged. But yeah, let me go ahead and kind of share. This is going to be my initial screen here. And over to the left, I have these three lines that I'm going to click. And since we're completely virtual in our district right now, um, Amplify has a program hub that has kind of condensed the lessons a little bit to where you have more resources that are geared towards um, online learning and the virtual learning that we're experiencing right now tends to make the lessons that are currently what I would be doing in person um, a little bit lengthy. And so they need to be condensed a little bit. And so what Amplify did was in their program hub, um, they kind of condensed those units to the, the bare bones necessities that we need to be teaching our students um, to help them meet the 3D statements and the expectations for each of the units. Um, so now that I'm here, again, I'm going to go to the remote hybrid learning resources since we're completely virtual. And once I click on that, I'm going to click my grade. Um, I'm teaching fourth grade, so I'm going to click on fourth grade. And then right down here, we're doing Earth's features. So let me click Earth's features. Now, um, you'll notice that on each one of these, you have a Google and a PDF version of each of these different um, either activities or resources or the lessons. Um, this is great depending on what you're needing them for. For me, since our students are completely using Google Classroom, I open everything in Google. And that way, once it's in Google, it's easy for me to assign it to them in Google Classroom. Um, the transfer there is, is very, very simple. And so, yeah, that's what I've been doing. And like I said, it makes it really easy that it's already in uh, the Google Documents form because they're in Google Classroom. So love that. Shout out to them for doing that. Um, I know it wasn't like that last year when we were doing it. I um, mean, they were just trying to turn some of that stuff over. So that's awesome that they were able to do that for us. But yeah, let me come down here. Um, I'm just going to click on lesson six and kind of walk you guys through that. So as I click on the slides that I want, um, it's going to first make me uh, make a copy. And so I just click make a copy and then in a new tab up here, it's going to open up that um, Google Slides. So now here are my Google Slides. And with it being a Google Slide, I have all of them already loaded. And again, it comes all the way down here and you can see um, all those different things. And these are very similar to what you would see in the normal units and lessons that you would be pushed up, uh, the Google Slides format here. So, all right, so I got my Google Slides. So now how does it seamlessly work with Nearpod? Well, up here at the top, you have add-ons. So when I click on add-ons, now I've added on Nearpod. Um, I have an account, there's free accounts, our district paid for us to have the upgraded version, but in the free account, you can do this as well. Um, now, since I've already installed it, what did I do before I installed it? Well, I just clicked get add-ons. And then once I'm here, I searched for Nearpod. After searching for Nearpod, I have it right there. And so click it, install it, and there you go. And it'll pop up like it does for me. Um, again, it's already installed, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, um, since it is installed, I'm gonna click on add-ons. I'm gonna click on Nearpod and I'm gonna open my Nearpod account. Now, sometimes when you're first doing this, when this loads over here, you may have to click log in with your Google account and log in again. Um, but sometimes if you're already logged in or been using it, here it is, it just pops up. So yeah, so now I'm in Nearpod. I have all of my stuff, um, the different programs that I can add to my lesson and activities I can add to my lesson uh, to make it a little bit more engaging and interactive for kids. So let's say for example, um, we were going to be reading a text, some things to think about with using with Nearpod. Um, I could in here embed web content like the book if I wanted to, or a lot of times what I've been doing um, with the book as well, depending on if it's wanting me to read particular pages, um, like with the fossil 
Hunter's Handbook and reading about conglomerate and sandstone, um, I may actually take a picture of these pages from the book and put them into a slide. And then once they're in a slide, I'm going to make them into a drawing, which is just me clicking right here, convert to draw it. Again, there's tons of things that you can do. Um, but if I wanted to convert to a draw, it, I can convert this picture to a draw. It, and by doing that, I just click that button and it's going to take slide 12. And it's going to copy it into a drawing activity where kids can type, highlight or circle. I like this because it allows me to make sure that kids are interacting with the text. I can actually see them as they're circling uh, vocabulary words, certain patches, passages that may be giving them um, the details that I'm wanting them to look for. And so I love converting some of the pages to draw it because then again, I can see it um, as they're working through it in the Nearpod lesson and how it pops up. So just something to think about there. Um, if there's a video, then the video also works as we're just playing. Um, through. Now, sometimes if you wanted to um, input other videos or if this one's not working, you can troubleshoot again by um, just being willing to, you can put in the web content or you can put the video. And if you click on video, you can actually paste um, the information right into this video library um, right here. So I can, this is their video library, but I can also search and go to YouTube, which a lot of these videos from Amplify, um, they've uploaded via YouTube. So if I wanted to check those out and copy and paste those in there, you could do it that way too. If you were having issues with your kids, maybe not hearing the sound on this or experiencing that, that's just a, a troubleshooting for you to maybe try out. Um, all right. So continuing on down here, again, we have these different activities um, that I might want to do. Again, there's a simulation and stuff that you could um, Again, modify by putting in web content if you wanted to or breaking that lesson up. Some things that I want to talk about that I really like to do as well. Let's say if I have a specific vocabulary word or fill in the blank activity that I want to do. So um, sometimes the key concepts at the end of the lesson from Amplify, I like to take those and put those into a fill in the blank. And the fill in the blank is very simple. If I want to do a fill in the blank, I just click that. And then I'm going to put that information in here. Um, so then whatever it is that I type in here, and again, if it was that key concept from before, um, what I'm going to do next is after I do that, and again, you can change the backgrounds to make it kind of fun and engaging that way. Um, I just select the words that I want them to fill in the blank with. And so then in their activity, they could be clicking and dragging and actually putting in those key concept vocabulary words that where they need to go. And so I love to do that at the end of the lesson or in the middle of the lesson when we're reviewing, reviewing like, oh, these are the big key concepts that they need um, to know. Those are usually the ones that we would be posting on our science boards um, for the kids to have throughout the unit. Again, just trying to make it interactive for the kids and give them things to do to keep them engaged with the activity. Um, also, if there are vocabulary words, like I said, sometimes I'll do fill in the blanks um, with those as well. There are some questions sometimes um, that will pop up and when students, for example, have to answer some of these questions, some things to think about, you can do a collaborative board where students can um, basically post their answers to this question. It's kind of like having a group discussion. I can enter the topic, I can post the question up there, and then students can type and all of their responses are up there. A cool little feature is that other students can like the responses. So a lot of times, instead of me saying, if another student has already posted, what you would have liked to share, just click like on their comment. And that kind of lets me know that you were thinking the same thing that they were thinking. And maybe try to post something else. Um, with the collaborative board, students can also um, search and find images to post. And with safety in mind, when you're setting this up, you can actually select the features. Um, and with those features, it can be that you have to approve the post before students' ideas pop up there, um, which is a good thing to, to check out. Um, and, and, and think about uh, depending on the age level and, and your kiddos and, and if they might put inappropriate pictures or things up there. Um, there is a way for you to monitor those before they go up on the collaborative board. Uh, so yeah, so fun stuff there. Again, there's matching pairs, great activity for vocabulary words. Um, sometimes I'll have them do matching pairs. There's a vocabulary word with the definition and they just have to make those matches. Um, there's a poll that you can take um, asking kids questions. And that's again, just right there in the activity. Again, tons of great stuff um, for them to be able to do. Now towards the end of the lesson here, a lot of times we'll do an exit slip or a quick formative assessment. 
And one fun way to do that that I really love about Nearpod is this time to climb. Um, students will get to select these fun little characters. And then as they answer questions based on getting it right and how quickly they get it right, their little animal will climb up the side of a mountain and kids eat it up and love it uh, as, as they're climbing up the mountain. And then I always um, make a big deal about my top 10. The program itself will sh display the top three students that are on there, but I always read off the names of the top 10 um, just to include more students in the celebration of, of getting those answers right and stuff. And so these are very simple and easy to set up. You just type in your question. You can type in your answers on here. You can add answers. So you have four options for them to choose from. Select which one is the right option. Um, I love these reference images, especially using Amplify. A lot of the times there are great images, like in this fossils, for example, um, or the rocks that we're looking at as examples. If I'm asking a question about that, I can take a screenshot from the slides and then save it to my computer and upload it as a reference image for kids to be able to use as they're answering these questions. And I like that. I can also use the images as well if I wanted to. Um, so if I was talking about a specific rock type, I maybe be able to find images that were down here of each of those rock types. And then students would select the one that may match sedimentary rocks, for example. So I can add questions and do multiple questions. Um, for right now, it's 30 seconds and that's pretty standard. But if I wanted to click and change the time, I can add it um, up to a minute. And again, you want to keep in mind the age group that you're working with. Right now for my fourth graders, 30 seconds is pretty good. But lower elementary, you might want to give them just a little bit more time um, if you need to, uh, to be able to answer some of those questions. So yeah, so again, I got this. Do my little things here. Question answers, which one is the right one? And then I click save. And it's just going to go right in there. And now I have my little time to climb activity. So we got our time to climb. We've talked about that and how I like to use that and some of the other programs um, that we have. And again, you can YouTube some other activities as well um, that are through here. Uh, quiz is uh, basically just a quiz. So um, different than the time to climb, it's time to climb is going to show kids other kids at the same time. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more um, private, and that students are not going to see um, the success of other students or what the other students are scoring or anything like that, then you can just give them the quiz, a little formative quiz at the end, and they can answer those questions as well. So there's something else to think about. Now, let's say I'm all done. I've completed everything. I've got it all together and turned in. I'm going to save and go to Nearpod. And that's, of course, just going to take me right to my Nearpod account that I already have up. You can see other lessons that I've done in the past. And then what it's going to do is it's gonna save my slides that I have there. Now, while it's saving my slides, I can just tell you guys again about how this is gonna work with my Google Classroom and everything. So as I'm teaching, of course, this lesson is gonna be live participation. If I click on live participation, it's gonna take me to where the lesson is. I can assign this in Google Classroom. A lot of times I just like to post the link in the chat for kids to use. And that way I can actively see that they're working with me. With that link, I will also post this code. Um, in case they need that code. If they're doing it for the first time, they're going to have to log in um, and use their Google account to do that. Um, our school has that. And once I've done this at the beginning, then it's fairly easy for them to do it um, throughout. So I love that this little feature down here pops up as well. So that's down at the bottom left. And it gives me a student list. Every time a student logs on to the active Nearpod lesson, their name pops up here. And it lets me see which students are participating. So if you have those kids that don't have their cameras on and stuff, like it lets me know, are they even there at that seat right now? Okay, they've logged in. And then with the Nearpod lessons, every two or three slides, I have them actively doing something. So it gets those, make sure that I can see which kids are actively participating. And at the end of the lesson, when I run the report, I'll know the percentage that students were actively engaged with the activity. Not necessarily how many they got right or wrong with some of their questions, but were they participating? Were they clicking? Were they turning things in with the activity? So yeah, so that's kind of cool. I enjoy that a lot. Um, and then I can just click through the slides. And then of course I would be teaching my lesson. Now, um, this helps with me, like I'm not sharing my screen in this situation because kids click the link and the Nearpod link takes them. So they're watching, they can still hear me and stuff um, as I'm talking and everything. But yeah, this is kind of just on their screen and they're able to look at it and go through and I'm in control. So I turn the slides and I'm the only one that can turn the slides when they're doing the active participation with me. Um, so yeah, there was the uh, activity. 
So this is the draw it. If other kids are logged in, their little boxes are going to be surrounding this. And then if I have a time on it, um, I would start that time and they would have a certain amount of time to, to work on that activity and to draw it. Um, and this activity was just a quick quiz. So again, all the students that are logged in, I'm going to see their names here on the left and I'm going to start the activity and I have a timer for that. And so then, of course, they have that amount of time to answer those questions. And a lot of times I can talk a little bit beforehand to let them know how much time and what they're doing. And then I can start the activity. And then, it, of course, gives them that time to do that. So, yeah, just some fun stuff with that. Um, and then, again, we have some of these other things. And then at the end of my lesson, I kind of talked about the uh, time to climb. So here it is. This is the time to climb uh, by Nearpod. And again, it's a fun game. Love that. I think it's really fun and interactive for the kids. And my kids eat it up all the time. So they have really cool three that you could do, space, Himalaya, or underwater. But they also do these fun little themes as well called Valentine's Day. And during the holidays, there's a holiday version. And the kids kind of like the themed ones that we get to throw those in there every once in a while. But I would just click it. And then, of course, I would click continue. And then kids would log in with their little animal creatures. And then I could see, based upon... If I have 22 students on my student list here, then I should know once I click continue on that screen, it's going to post and it's going to say waiting for players to connect zero connected. I should have 22 kids because that's how many people are in my Nearpod. So 22 and that will let me know I can start that. Um, if I do start this and someone's not logged in, they're going to miss that activity and it's going to percentage wise show up that they did not participate. So cool stuff there. And of course, I would click start. And then it would go through the questions and they would go up the hill and we would joke around and talk about, oh, look, someone got that right. Or, oh, look, who, you're coming up from the back. Um, love it. It's awesome. Look how much you're improving and good stuff like that. So um, sometimes my pair educators will participate as well. And I'll challenge kids like, don't let the don't let the teachers beat you. And the kids love to try to beat the teacher in those moments. Um, so kind of fun. But, yeah, that's what I'm doing with that. And again, it's all just right with the um, Google Slides that Amplify provides. So. Hopefully this was helpful and gave you some tips on how you can maybe implement, implement something new and fun with your current Amplify slides or any Google slides that you're creating. Again, with any Google slides at all, if you open up Google and you have that add-on, you can turn it into a Nearpod lesson. You can put those games and activities in and hopefully some of my ideas on how I'm using those games and activities in my lessons might give you some ideas on what you can do as well. And that's the goal here, just to try to help each other out as we're going through a pretty crazy time. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hang in there. We're going to get through this. And again, I hope that this helped out in some small way.